Your homework is to memorize this and write it 15 times. Welcome to the coolest, hippest half hour of fun on TV. This is Brain Stew with Jennifer Pulley. Do rats, spiders, roaches, leeches, and maggots make your skin crawl? This week, Brain Stew takes a trip to a room filled with creepy crawlies to find out how these creatures can actually help make our life better. Plus, we get the scoop on animal poop. What can droppings tell us about animals? Of course, we have a creepy multimedia minute and this week's Try at Home experiment. Stick around, there's tons more. Brain Stew is next. Ready to get grossed out? What pops into that big brain of yours when you think of leeches? Nasty. Roaches? Ultra cool. Spiders? Ugly. Rats? Cool. How about scorpions? Slugs? Ugh. My personal favorite, maggots. Today, we're at Owls Creek Marsh Pavilion, which is part of the Virginia Marine Science Museum, and that's in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anyway, we're stewing our brain with strange and unusual creatures. Animals that most of us think are gross, disgusting, filthy, dirty, obscene, nasty, or just plain gross. You know, I could have kept on going with those descriptive words, but I got a show to do. Besides being all those adjectives, would you believe that rats, spiders, scorpions, leeches, and maggots all have something in common? Let me guess, is it their good looks? I know, it's their great reputation. You guys are just so funny sometimes, you're killing me. Now really, let's get serious, well, kind of serious. Would you believe that spiders, rats, scorpions, leeches, and maggots all contribute to the health of humans? Yeah, they make our life healthier, longer, and more normal. Believe it or not, they do. Maybe by the end of the show, I'll have to think of some better adjectives to describe these animals. We also talk about slugs and roaches. I mean, what is up with those nasty creatures? They make my skin crawl. Me too. I don't know about you, but I'm just dying to know what purpose slugs and roaches have in our world. Plus, we get the scoop on poop. Yep, I said it, poop. Want some synonyms? How about caca, waste, stinky, scat, Dropping, poo-poo, feces, dung, doo-doo, and number two. You know, for something that most people don't like to talk about, the English language sure does have a lot of words for it. Why would I bring up poop? Because many people study it. People who have pets or veterinarians who work with animals can learn tons about an animal's health just by checking out their dropping. You know, parents of newborn babies are always mesmerized by what's in Junior's diaper. Why? Why? Well, let's think about it. Animals, like newborn babies, can't talk. So they can't tell anyone when they're feeling bad. So by examining their poo-poo, we can tell what's wrong. Today, we're at the Virginia Marine Science Museum in Virginia Beach, Virginia. We're in the creepy crawly room. This is my friend, Carol Ann. Hey, Jen. Welcome to the museum and to the creepy crawly room. Those are rats over there. Right. Uh. What kind of rat is that? Those are Norway rats, and they get their name because they actually are not native to the United States, but they came over on ships. And uh, Norway rats have a pretty bad reputation. One of the really neat things about these guys is they can live just about anywhere and they'll eat just about anything. And that's what um, has enabled them to uh, do so well because um, they adapt to their environment and their food choices are just about anything. What do they eat? Um, these guys are primarily vegetarian. So they like to eat plants, fruits, grasses, um, seeds, nuts. Um, They'll eat, and then they'll get into people's garbage. So they'll eat things like uh, leftover pizza and hamburgers. Can rats make you get sick? A lot of people think that rats are dirty. And it's not actually the rats themselves that are dirty. It's the places that they find to live in. So uh, they're going out cleaning up our garbage, and uh, then they get that bad reputation. By nature, they're very clean animals. They spend most of their day just grooming and keeping themselves clean. A grooming um, day. A grooming day. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so by nature, they really are very clean animals. It's just sometimes they, uh, they need to live in some areas that aren't so clean. Okay, so rats aren't gonna make me sick. 
Yeah. Okay. Tell me something good about rats. What can rats do to make me live longer and make my life better? There's been rat research to help with cancer, with diabetes, um, with investigating causes for mental illness, um, for ways to increase your t intelligence. Maybe someday rats can be the, the answer to AIDS. Wow. Isn't that so amazing? rats really can help us out. What's a tarantula? Tarantulas oh. are large hairy spiders um, that generally live in warm climates and so um, there are some that live in the United States and the southwestern states but most of them live in tropical rainforests. Um, I see her little feet coming up. She's right. got eight legs, right? She has eight legs and if you start to count it looks like at first she has ten because she has these two extra ones in the front Yes. and um, those are called pedipalps and they're actually like a type of antenna Okay. and it helps her to feel around and know what's going on. No, yeah, but she just raised two of her She's legs. raising them because the, she's reacting to the brightness in the room. So she's putting them up and she's, uh, she's actually covering her eyes a little bit. How can spiders help us? These guys, um, they have special chemicals in their saliva that help them break down their food. So she'll put her fangs into something and make a milkshake out of it. Oh, cool. And a little blender? Exactly. <laughs> so scientists are um, possibly using that to help break down harmful tissues in our bodies like tumors. Also, spider webs um, have a special chemical in them that actually promotes healing. If you have an injury on your body, you put a spider web over it, it'll actually increase the healing process. How do spiders spin their webs? Well, she has these uh, special little tools on the back side of her body. They're called spinnerets. And um, she uses them to, um, she'll secrete the silk out of a little opening right there at the base. And she'll use the spinneret to draw it on out and to make her design and um, to trap her prey. Caroline, you've shown me a lot of creepy, <laughs> crawly things. From spiders, now we're over here at, at the scorpions. Exactly. Are scorpions like spiders? Scorpions are cousins to spiders. Um, they're in the same group, which are called arachnids. Mm -hmm. And some of the ways that you can tell that they're related is by the way their bodies are made up. So if you start to count the legs, you can see that the scorpions do have eight legs. And then they have the long front claws, which, um, which help them to grab onto their prey. Um, these guys also use venom to immobilize their prey the same way that spiders do. Except instead of being located in their fangs, yeah. their venom is located in their tail. Doesn't their tail sting? These guys um, are a little bit skittish, and so when they get frightened, they'll put their tails down and try to sting. Oh. Um, so that's why I'm not holding this big that's guy. That's a good idea. Um, what would it feel like? This sting would probably feel like a pretty good bee sting. But you still don't want to go picking up scorpions. I still don't want to be picking <laughs> this guy up. We do have one in the United States States that could actually kill a person. And they can, now are they that size? They're much smaller and they're much lighter colored, almost transparent looking. Latch on to leeches? I don't think so, Carolyn. Leeches are gross. All they do is suck blood. Actually, uh, there are some people who are really grateful to be latched on by a leech. Um, for example, people who have um, had a traumatic injury and the swelling becomes um, so severe that it could actually cause damage to their tissues. Um, you slap a leech on there and they suck, suck up to 11 times their body weight in blood. And the swelling goes down and you can heal much faster. Um, they also have chemicals in their, in their bellies that help them to preserve blood. And that may be one of the ways that um, we can help with um, blood transfusions and, and um, other medical procedures that involve um, adding blood during surgery. And that's what they, they live on blood. They, they live do. on blood. Where do I find leeches? In a pond or a lake or a river. No, that's where they're found. Ponds, lakes, rivers. Exactly. Okay, and are they f where in the United States? Everywhere? Pretty much everywhere. Um, Caroline, I have to give you a hand on this exhibit. It's, uh, very, very, very well, creative. Well, thanks. Uh, we've, gotten quite a, we've, we've gotten quite a few hands in this exhibit, I can imagine. Um, when we talk about maggots, I mean, I don't even like the word maggot. It just sounds so gross. What is a maggot? Maggots are the babies of different species of flies. Okay, so like baby flies are called baby flies, they're called maggots. Maggots. We have the interesting life cycle of a fly in here. Um, we have the babies, um, which are happily uh, moving around on this hand and um, once the babies get full um, they will get a hard crusty shell around them and that's called the pupa and they 
maintain that state for a couple of weeks and then they will change into a fly. I can't think of anything good about a maggot. The majority of the maggots in this world are very beneficial. Um, besides being able to decompose various things, they also are an important food source for a lot of different animals. Do other animals eat maggots? There are lots of animals that eat them, um, all the way from tiny little lizards and um, other types of reptiles um, to things as large as um, in the rainforest as uh, uh, monkeys and gorillas. They will eat maggots. They will eat maggots. Now, maggots are, are they considered decomposers? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they, they, they break down dead things, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Or they eat dead things? Right. And they will um, break, put those nutrients back into the soil. Okay, I'm feeling a little creepy and kind of grossed out, but you know, I am learning some fascinating facts about these creatures that I never knew. Now, when I was a little, I used to see on my sidewalks the lugs. And they were like, in the morning I'd see them, and they had like left this little slimy trail. What else do slugs do besides leave a slimy trail? Well, they do leave the slime trails, and oftentimes that's a message to another slug that they're in town and they're available. Okay, and you sure. can notice this little girl over here is actually laying some eggs. And uh, many animals will eat the eggs. Um, they're also very nutritious. But slugs are important decomposers. Um, they love to munch on uh, vegetables and plants, which most gardeners really have a, have a fit about. Something really cool about slugs as well is that um, they have amazing regenerative abilities. And so researchers are looking to that as well for ways to help us. Um, a slug could lose an eye and grow it back. How do slugs eat? The mouth is actually like a little, almost like a little drill. It, the tongue comes out and it has teeth on it. And so they saw away at the food, and that's tucked away up inside Oh, there. so we can't even see we it? We can't even see it unless they open it up. What are these little things on the, they look like antennas. Exactly. The two tiny ones are antennae, and the two long ones are the eyes. The eyes are on stalks so that they can look up and around and over things. So are you completely grossed out or totally surprised? Who knew all these animals that we think so badly of are really here to make our lives better? Up next, we continue talking to my friend Carol Ann, but this time she's going to give us the scoop on animal food. Check out this brain strain, it's going to make your skin crawl. You guys, check out my new brooch. Uh, I mean, roach. Carol Ann. Hey, Jim. Hey. It's beautiful. Really great. Mmm. Hey. Okay, what are these roaches called again? Uh, Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Mm. And they get their name because of the way they protect themselves by hissing. And you back off when you hear them hissing. Uh, well, a lot of times in the wild, when animals hear a loud sound coming from nowhere, and then with the males, they can see those horns. It's pretty intimidating. Sure. Lovely. She's she's a good looker, and, and this is a, this is her uh, her boyfriend. You can tell the difference between the girl and the boy because of the horns that he has on his head. Um, the males will get very large horns, and in order to attract a female, he'll bend it forward mm -hmm. and rush towards her and make loud hissing sounds. Really? To get her attention. Like. Wow. Exactly, that's just like that. Now, um, you know, I mean, off the television, of course. That's why I'm wearing this roach. Roach. A roach is dirty. Uh, just like the rats, a lot of people think that. Um, but the truth of the matter is, there's almost 4,000 different species of roaches. About 3,500. And out of those species, there are only in the whole world about 25 that are considered pests. All the rest are clean, um, very beneficial decomposers. Um, and also an important food source, just like the maggots, um, for a lot of animals that live in the rainforest. Did you hear that? Yes. He did it real gently. I never had a piece of jewelry that hisses at me. There you go. Can you hear that? Can you hear it? There we go. And Can what he's it? doing is he's expelling air from the little spiracles he has on the side of his body. 
and that's how he makes those sounds. Now, he's hissing at you because he's not happy. Right, because he doesn't want me to hold him in one place. What kind of roach can I find in my house? We do have uh, the German cockroaches, which are over here. Um, they get their name because they were actually an introduced species, so they're not native to the United States. But they're here But now. they're here, and they're here with gangbusters. Um, really? They reproduce like nobody's business, and they'll live anywhere. And, um, so Especially in this home here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. these are the kind of roaches that we would find if we leave food around or anything like that. These are the roaches. It, right. Roaches have been known to eat just about anything. They'll eat, uh, they'll eat cloth. They'll eat soap. Why? Because they're trying to survive. Um, they have the reason why roaches do so well is because they're adaptable. They're and, like rats, kind of, right? Right. And animals become endangered because they can't deal with changing condi conditions in their environment. Roaches have no problem with that. Now, this is what we've all been waiting for. I know I've been waiting for this. Carol Ann, give us the scoop on animal poop. <laughs> Tell us about it. This is, this is a little bat. Right, this Cute is um, as can be. This little bat is actually called a big brown bat. Hmm. And um, she's the most common bat that can be found in this area. And um, they're really beneficial because they eat their weight in insects a night. Um, this little girl prefers to eat some of the beetles that can devastate crops, like corn. All right, now, Carolyn, if you're telling me that this little thing eats up to its own weight in insects every night, must poop a lot. That's right. She's got to get rid of it somehow. Yep. And uh, Do you have an example? I most certainly do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> That's right. You can come on over here to our, uh, our dome of poop. Yes. And you can see the illustrious number seven okay. is bat guano. Produced uh, primarily by Annie. Guano is just another word for bat poop. Yeah. Um, just like uh, scat and caca and uh, number two. That's right. A doo doo and <laughs> doo doo. The list goes on and on and on. There we go. She eats a lot. She eats 40 mealworms in a night. Um, and for the size of her, that's that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Their metabolisms are really quick, so they need to um, get as much energy as possible because they need to fly around at night. Sure. We have about 40 different species of bats that can be found in the U.S., and more than half of them are considered endangered. What is scat? Scat is animal droppings. Okay. And um, there is really a science to it. Um, you can tell what types of animals can be found in habitats that you're exploring just by studying their scat. Um, now, these, this is not real scat, of course. Exactly. You can touch that all you'd like. It's got a fact on the back. This is not something you would want to do. See right. some scat and pick yeah, it up. Pick and it on up. Think there might be a fact Everything on it you it. ever wanted to know about poop and more. Hmm. Um, for example, um, you can tell if your animal is healthy just by the color and the consistency of the scat that's left behind. With deer, you can tell whether it's a boy or a girl by just by the shape of their scat. Here's bat guano, so it's like kind of little. And then I go down here, and That's I mean, right. this is like, whoa! That's mambo side. <laughs> Who does that belong to? That's elephant. Whoa. And um, elephants are really amazing producers of dung. And uh, <laughs> one of the reasons is elephants uh, don't utilize all their, um, they utilize only about half of the food that they eat. Um, so they need to eat a lot of food and they need to leave a lot behind. What is a dung beetle? Uh, dung beetles get their name because of um, how much they actually depend on dung. They depend their whole entire lives on it. So they live in it? So they live in it. They feed on it. They. W <laughs> they work with it, they roll it and push it. Oh, look at that. So wait, this is not a real one, right? This is a model. Now, you're telling me that that dung beetle could push that big piece of dung? Or larger. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that dung ball rolling. Keep it round. Keep it warm. Keep it safe. It's our home. Dung ball. <laughs> rolling, rolling. Okay. So they're strong little devils. Um, these little guys will pick the perfect piece of dung, mm -hmm. and um, then they'll put it in a safe place and they'll lay their eggs in it. The babies will stay safe deep inside and also warm. Oh, of course. And then <laughs> the babies will hatch out and they'll feed on it. 
and then they'll, they'll change, they'll metamorphosize inside, and then they'll come out as adults and start the whole process all over again. So they live in a house of junk, is basically what it is. Pretty much. This little guy was found in the barn rolling a piece of coarse manure. He's rolling it. Where was he going in with it? We don't he was know. taking it to a safe place. Oh, okay. And we're safe. That's right. To live in it. That's <laughs> what you call a mobile home. <laughs> <laughs> How do animals use caca to communicate? Marking out specific territorial boundaries is very important for many animals, like the tiger right here. This is tiger caca. This is tiger caca. Mm -hmm. So they literally make a scent fence around their property. They'll scent mark all the outer boundaries, and if a tiger comes in without being welcome, they have a fight on their hands. Strange. But true. Can animal droppings help a plant grow? Some animals have more beneficial droppings than others. Okay. So for example, the animals I talked about earlier, like the slugs and the cockroaches, yeah. um, their, their caca is very nutrient rich, so it forms the basis of um, rich soil. Now others need to be processed a little more, but it's also just as beneficial. Caroline, I want to thank you so much for all your facts on feces. She is really crazy. <laughs> I really appreciate all the scoop that you gave us on poop and all your information about roaches and bats and rats and scorpions and spiders and everything, all those creepy crawly creatures that Thanks you for about. coming, Jennifer. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, just a little piece of advice from both Caroline and myself. Always look, but don't, don't touch it. Got it? Oh, yeah, I got it. Hey, you, don't scat. I mean, scoot off just yet. Up next, we have a kid performing an awesome experiment you've got to try at home. Plus, if you want to know more about creepy crawlers and animal dung, those librarians are going to give us more information. We'll be back in a poo. I, I mean, phew. Like the tarantula we saw, guess the size of an intruder in its web. Let's find out. This is a really easy experiment. All you need is two chairs, a ball of string, and a helper. <laughs> and here's the procedure. First, tie the string between the two chairs. need scissors. Make sure the string is really tight. Number two, you go to this end and send your partner to this end. Right here? Right there. Number three, don't look at your partner. In fact, turn away from your partner. Number four, gently place your fingertips on the end of the string. Finally, have your partner pluck the opposite end of the string. Remember, don't look at your partner. Your helper should pluck the string differently each time, from very gentle to very firm. You've got to feel these results. When Jennifer plucked the string gently, I felt a weak vibration. When she plucked the string firmly, I felt a strong vibration. <laughs> what does this have to do with spiders? Yeah. Well, Spiders feel the vibration of their web. When the web shakes, the spider senses the movement because it has sensory hairs on its legs. If the vibration is weak, the spider ignores it. Very large vibrations could mean that the intruder may injure the spider, so it often hides or cuts the strand. A medium vibration lets the spider know that an intruder is small enough to catch and eat. It's dinner time. Ugh, I don't know about you, but I'm all pooped out. <laughs> Yeah, another jamming show to rock your brain. Next time you see a rat or a spider or a leech or a scorpion or a maggot or a slug, just remember all the good things they can do for us. Those poor guys, they just get a bad rap. 
And who will forget our segment on poop? I sure won't. Remember, always look where you step, and I'll see you in that big brain of yours next week. Why do you found <laughs> For something less people, sorry. Get off me! You got you gotta miss. You don't wanna miss. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are just too funny. I'm just dying to know what purpose ru rugs and slouches. What? Want some synonyms? How about these? Poop. <laughs>